All right. Um, welcome to another episode of the uh, Kick and Cover podcast. Uh, today we have uh, Coach Dan Lieber with us. He's the uh, head coach at Tualatin uh, High School in uh, Oregon, just outside of Portland. Uh, coach, how you doing? Doing well, man. Thanks for having me. No problem, Coach. I, I appreciate you coming on. We've been kind of playing tag for like the past like three weeks, I... trying to get this scheduled. So. Um, so I, I appreciate you coming on, but uh, before we get started, for the coaches who do, who have had a chance to talk to you, meet you, talk and talk, you want to kind of give them your background about how you ended up to Walden? Sure. Uh, I played. Uh, I grew up in Oregon. Uh, went to Linfield College here in in, uh, in Oregon, home of the uh, the, the streak. Uh, very proud Linfield Wildcat. From there, I took a. Uh, had high school job at a very small high school in rural Oregon. Uh, and then from there, I jumped to uh, Division Two Southeastern Oklahoma uh, as a graduate assistant. And then uh, uh, spent a couple of years there and then jumped to the University of Puget Sound up in Tacoma, Washington as the offensive line coach. And then uh, jumped to uh, Santa Barbara City College in uh, California. Uh, home of the Vaqueros, had a great time coaching junior college football at one of the most beautiful stadiums in America uh, for the legend Craig Moropoulos. And then uh, kind of wanted to slow things down, uh, wanted to jump to a, a high school where I knew I could make an impact and be a long time. And, um, you know, just the right opportunity came along to come home and me and my wife come back to Portland, start a family. I have a great spot here at Tualatin. Super thankful for uh, the opportunity to be the head coach there. Um, this will be my fourth season if we get to play <laughs> this spring. Um, and so, you know, um, took over a situation where we were two and nine uh, before I got there and we've Went seven and four two years in a row, and then last year, nine and three, uh, best season in ten years, and hoping to build on that. And a big reason for that, I feel like, is uh, our attention to detail on uh, special teams. Now, before you get started with some of your philosophy stuff, Coach, how much of this stuff did you take from your time bouncing it around in a couple of different colleges? Quite a few, quite a quite a bit of it. Um, you know, it's just an area that I've always been intrigued by. And uh, there were a couple places I was at where, you know, we paid a, attention to detail uh, on special teams and it made a huge difference. And then there were some places where I've been where we didn't. And you know, you the, the scoreboard and your win-loss record really, uh, really show the difference. So, um, you know, that's... Yeah, I've, I've been around some pretty good special teams minds and just took what I knew from them and learned more. There's Stacy Collins is now the uh, special teams coordinator at uh, Boise State. A uh, friend of mine has really helped me a ton and given me a lot of stuff. Uh, what you'll find about college special teams guys is they, they are very willing to, to talk to high school coaches and other coaches because – Everybody wants to talk to the OC and DC at these clinics, but special teams guys, you know, they have just as much knowledge uh, as those guys and are always willing to, to help. Oh, that's a hundred percent true coach. Like I couldn't agree more. Like you, you, you email or DM, but half these coaches, some may get back to you. Some may not because they're, they're as blows up as it is. You DM yeah. uh, or email a special teams coach. And most are like, yeah, what do you need? I mean, <laughs> I mean, you need three hour Zoom? Fine. That's yeah, like they'll jump on that. And like I said, I've been very fortunate doing this. Like I have a bunch of either current or former special teams guys because they're like, yeah, I'll, what do you need? How can yeah. I help you? So, um, Jake Cook is at Oregon State has helped me out a lot too. Good. I mean, that, 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 I mean, I don't know enough much about Oregon State in the, anymore, even though I have a long sleeve Oregon State shirt just randomly. Um, but like I said, they, they usually look like they do some pretty good stuff over there. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, last year that they made a rule about uh, something they did against Hawaii, they did a, a funky drop kick kickoff and it 
went way up, way up in the air and they, and they got it. And, uh, this past year they outlawed that because of that. So anytime they make a rule because something you did, that is the ultimate compliment. I, yeah. I mean, well, I think that's probably true in about any sport, actually probably any, any competitive atmosphere. I'll rephrase it that way. If they have to change rules because you're doing something a certain way, that's kind of a badge of honor, really. For sure. Um, for sure. So kind of where we'll go from here is kind of like I've done for like the past 10 plus episodes by the time this comes out. Um, and I, like, like normal, I'm just going to kind of let you do your thing, Coach, and kind of because I know you have some ideas you wanted to talk about and show some film at the end, and then I'll pick your brain or butt in with bad jokes and other things as, as we go. Okay. And so, Coach, uh, the floor is yours. Thanks, man. Yeah, uh, we the big the big thing I think about how you phrase, especially in high school, because in college and the NFL, obviously, you know, special teams is a huge deal because guys are getting on the bus, staying on the team, staying in the league. Uh, but high school football sometimes it can be tough to generate excitement. Um, and the, and the one thing uh, I will tell you um, that uh, Stacy Collins at Boise State told me way back when he was at Central Washington is your head if you're the head coach and you're not involved in special teams you're telling your team that it's not important right you're telling them it's not important so uh if if you're a special teams coordinator uh or a head coach watching this get your head coach involved in some capacity so it kind of sets the tone in the program that uh this is important um and it really it really is an edge uh, we play in, in Oregon in the Three Rivers League, which has crowned the state champion, uh, I think, the, the past uh, three or four years. And it had a representative uh, finalist in there every every one of those years as well if we didn't win it. And uh, every single snap, you're, you're looking for an edge in our league like like everybody is on a Friday night. So we call it special forces. We never call it special teams because, um, you know, this is kind of the elite Navy SEAL crew um, of our football team that we're going to put on here. You know, it's it's a third of the game. It's a third of all snaps in the game of football. So if you're taking them off and they're not serious, then you're giving your opponent the the edge. Um, We talk about making big plays on special forces. And, you know, I go – I. I go crazy when we make a big play on special forces uh, and it really kind of radiates to the kids. Uh, We want to win the field position battle. Um, It's a lot easier to score when you get the ball on the minus 40 than the minus 20 every time. It's just easier to, to get there. Uh, And the percentages will tell you that. Uh, And we put our dudes on special teams, you know, I think, um, the philosophy of, of sneaking, you know, sophomores or, or kids that don't play a lot on there. Um, you know, I think you're, you're, you're you, you, this is football. You want your best dudes out there. So we do, we put our, some of our best players on special teams, not to say, you know, if we have a kid on the field, you know, every snap of the game that we, we steal a few plays here and there, but um, we really do, spend a ton of time on our personnel and making sure we have the right, uh, pieces, um, in in play. Um, last year we had a quarterback who was, he was a football player. The kid was, you know, nobody starts their quarterback on defense anymore. Right. Well, if I wouldn't have started this kid on defense, he, he would, he probably would have tried to fight me. Right. I mean, that's just kind of, Kitty was, he started on special teams, you know, starting quarterback. That never happens. But again, we want to put the right player in the right place um, on all of our special teams. And we want to get our dudes out there. And we, we never want to let our opponents rest. I think one of the, the ultimate compliments for me uh, is just hearing opposing coaches and uh, freak out over there when when we do go on special teams you know watch this watch that watch the fake watch this you know it just 
you know, I've had guys so on fourth and short with our front squad on their midfield, so psyched out that they've called two timeouts in a row just to make sure they knew what uh, we were lined up in. So uh, we don't, when, when you play to in high school, we don't ever want you to be, uh, e- feel easy uh, about what's going on. We want you paranoid all the time. Uh, some of our su- the success we've had the past three years, I didn't say four because we haven't played this year because of COVID. Uh, six uh, touched it, six kicks for touchdowns. We blocked ten punts and PATs. Uh, converted five fake punts that that led to points on that drive. Our average field position has been the uh, minus thirty five in my time here. Um, you know, the, the only thing we haven't done a ton of is onside kicks, but the two that we've done have been in really critical situations where we needed the ball um, and we're, we, uh, we got them. So um, those are just some of the successes we've had uh, on, on our special teams unit in, investment wise. So one of the big things people talk, talk to me about is, you know, oh, if you got to be great on special teams, then, you know, we need to spend 45 minutes on it, you know. And uh, that's a huge misconception. I think if you're organized with it and you have your drills set up, um, you're going to spend 20 minutes uh, on special forces. And towards the end of the season, we shave that playoff time down to about 15 um minutes so we do shave five minutes off about midway through the season um we spend the first part of every sunday in our staff meetings going through the depth chart going through the film to see you know who who's not taking it seriously who's hurt uh and make adjustments um we dedicate an entire team meeting on a tuesday night about a half hour team meeting to watching our opponent special teams and then going through our schemes and adjustments and how we're going to uh, attack uh, our opponent. Um, It's the only uh, team award at our banquet that the coaches decide the the kids vote on everything. Right. But we as coaches decide uh, who the special forces player of the year uh, is. And it's one of the last awards we give at our banquet. And I spent some extra money to make the, the award cool. Uh, one thing I didn't put on here, we do a special teams player of the week, just like we do offensive and defensive player of the week. Uh, we bought, we buy the kids dog tags. Um, Cause it's a special forces thing, you know, on Amazon, you can order dog tags. It says special forces on there. Why if do you, you went, why do yeah. you not allow them to vote on it and have the coaches do it instead? Because, uh, you know, kids, kids don't always get it right. You know, yes, uh, that I stuff, a lot of that stuff becomes a popularity contest sometimes, you know, like, oh, the starting running back is the returner and he did take one to the house. So, you know, he was the offensive MVP too. So let's just give it to him, you know? So, you know, I, we're going to, as a coaching staff, we would, you know, go, well, this kid blocked four kicks for us and helped help win us a game. So we kind of get to basically really kind of hype it up and say, hey, this is the only thing that that we're making sure at this banquet that is remembered forever correctly, you know. So that's, uh, that's kind of why we do it that way. So the the – one I'm going to talk about today, and I'm, I'm only going to show one or two clips here because um, I, I don't want any of the people we play to steal our stuff, uh, is our swinging gate and PAT field goal. Um, our, our number one goal is to steal time from our opponent. Um, we want, after a score, uh, morale is down on the, the other side. We want to create some panic and we want to give you a bunch of different looks that you're going to have to, as a D coordinator, prepare your team for. 
every week. So that's kind of the philosophy behind it is we want you to spend 10, 15 extra minutes preparing for this stuff. And we might not even do it, you know? So, uh, we have about four to five formations we use. We keep it super simple. We start, uh, that first week of doubles. We just install the first formation with one fake. Um, and we really keep it very basic, uh, as far as I think I spelled recycle wrong, but that's okay. Uh, and then we just recycle those four or five fakes and four or five uh, formations throughout the year. We go out, okay, our holder usually makes the call. Um, you know, we, we usually get a pretty athletic holder that can throw and run and make some plays, usually a backup quarterback. Uh, last year we used a really, uh, really good receiver who could throw. Um, he just comes comes out looks over we we tell them yes or no and then uh if it's a no everybody comes shifts back down and we kick kick the pat i think the big thing about this is if the look is there and this is the thing that makes people nervous if the look is there you have to do it once in a while you can't just shift every time and not ever run your your fakes because then your opponent's not going to take it seriously and the kids are, are going to slowly lose interest. But, um, if the look is there, you got, you got to have faith in your kids to, to execute the play. We call, we call this Portland. So that's the formation and the fake, right? That's all it is. It's Portland. Okay. So we have the, the, the big thing here is the games you can play with, uh, the snapper. Okay. If he's on the line, right. He can be eligible. He cannot be eligible based off the formation. So on in this one here, he is not eligible. Okay. He, he is our one, two, three, four, five down lineman. This pod over here with the lineman. Okay. They're just going to run a wedge. I think this, this kid on the bottom left here is a backside tight end. Just runs kind of an over an over route is all. Then we have uh, two eligible kids up top here. We have our uh, Daddy. our holder. I think where do we put their our kicker at? This is our kicker, right? And so the look is there. I think on this look on Portland, we said if there's one over two we're going to uh, to run the fake. And so I think this is the first, <coughs> bless you, first touchdown of uh, of our season in 2019. So we went for it right away. It was just a little RPO. These two two guys kind of ran some square ends and the, uh, the holder j just ran a little arrow route. The kid we snap it to, he can run it or just flick it is all. And again, I mean, you're looking for really small things. If we see, if we would have saw two over two over here, or this guy even closer, we just would have said, nope, motion in <coughs> and, uh, and kicked it. All right. So here's another one. It's a couple of years ago. Of course, we're probably not going to have the oh, okay. through a little motion game in there. Motion is great with this stuff because everybody's in man, and you can do all kind of all kinds of picks and rubs. Uh, but we basically, I think, we have trips over here. We end up throwing it to the snapper because the formation it's legal, right? Yeah. I mean, we got, we got trip, what we would call tray basically right here is it's a legal formation. We got two little pods going, uh, we bring the guy in motion and, uh, snapper snaps it and just 
makes a hell of a catch. Kids at kids at Oregon State, so he, he was capable of those things. But uh, yeah, I mean, just really easy stuff like that is is really our goal. And if you're breaking it down, if you're playing us, um, you got to break down five or six different formations and five or six different plays. And by the time you get to the playoffs or your league title, um, you know, your people are having to spend a bunch of extra time on it. So that's, that's our goal. And, you know, the other thing I'll say too, is if you ever need a two point play and want to be creative, you have all that stuff kind of built in. Um, that's what we do on PAT field goal. It's, it, it sounds a lot more time consuming than it is, but, but again, we're organized. We meet about it. We don't install anything on the field. We go over in a meeting. So what, right when we go to it and we're out there, we're, we're getting reps in five, three, three to five minutes or, or less. So the one thing I will say though, is people can geek out too much on, on, on the fake and forget to practice the PAT and field goal part i had one special teams guy uh was an old head coach he would geek out so much on the uh on the pa the the fake here on the swing gate that i had to be like okay we actually need to kick it a few times (laughs) you know but i mean people get into it the kids get into it um and i know people hate preparing for it now i i got one question before we go coaches how many um formations do you try to carry into um each game so that's a that's a great question one okay one it's like okay this is the one we're doing this week and a lot of times you know midway through the season we practice it before so the kids you know you throw it up in the meeting and just kind of refresh them but it's one okay you know and i'm totally against mid game deciding, Oh, let's run the one we ran three weeks ago that we haven't rep. We'll never do that. It's going to be specific. The one we practice, if it's not there, then we go thumbs down. We bring it in and we kick it. Okay. All right, coach. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, coaches, if you want to get a hold of coach, uh, his contact information will be in the bio, um, for you to reach out to him. Uh, coach is a good dude. Hopefully they'll be playing football by the time this comes out or at least or finished whenever this does come out. Um, hopefully they got some ball in this spring. Uh, so make sure you reach out to Coach. Like and subscribe to the video so other people can find it. Um, and that's another episode of the Kick and Cover podcast.